Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to be a little bit different than the other last two speakers. Um, what I want to do is show you the use of our tools and compilers to move an application to a GPU. Because it really is, I mean, they've all talked about putting in do concurrent, um, you know, putting in target directives or whatever. But the question is, where do I put them? And so we have developed um, over the years, first with the uh, Titan work at Oak Ridge, and now with the Frontier work at Oak Ridge and um, El Capitan at Livermore, we have developed a suite of tools to really help users move to the GPUs. Okay, so I'm, this is once again, like the previous speaker, a three hour talk, and I'm just gonna go hit the highlights. So first off, we have an excellent uh, performance analysis tool called Perf Tools and Apprentice is a GUI to really look at things like timelines, call chains, uh, MPI communication, et cetera. The other thing, which has recently been extended to generate OpenMP offload, is Reveal. Now, I would not use Reveal on a C++ code. I would use it on Fortran. It is really a scoping tool. And I'm gonna actually show the use of Reveal in this presentation. Now, contrary to where NVIDIA is going these days, I love directive-based programming models. The problem is you're always going to have to use some directives. And um, you know, they're portable. Um, there are a number of vendors that support both OpenMP and OpenACC. We support both. And we generate code for AMD and NVIDIA. And so, um, you know, really there's portability. Um, they really are incremental. Which, which is excellent. And that's kind of what I'm going to show. And then you can go in and optimize once you find out what it's using all the time. Um, so what I'm going to show is just some perf tools output from a very simple code called Amino. I don't want to do a complicated one because we're really short on time. But to use perf tools, all you do is you is load a perf tools light module, you build the application, you run the application, and the results come out. So basically, this is what I've done with the Hamino benchmark. Um, this RM here is to get an annotated listing. Um, to go with the statistics. So here's my um, statistics. In the Amino, there's one routine that uses all the time. Um, it does do a halo exchange, and that's where the real problem is going to hit you when you move to the GPU. Okay. Um, so. Um, it also breaks it down into the maximum function times on, this was run on two MPI tasks per node. Okay, uh, and load imbalance, et cetera. The other thing is it gives you on a line level where all the time is being spent. And so if I now look at that annotated listing, um, I see that all the time is being spent in right here. And there, there is an iterate, 
iteration loop and then a um, triple nested loop with a reduction. Um, and this is the Jacobi relaxation. Okay, so now the big question with this is what are the loop iterations? I mean, because in order to really figure out how best to put this on the accelerator, I want to know what K max, J max, and I max are. Okay, so we have another thing called perf tools light loops. Um, and what this is going to do is get us the loop iteration count. And it now I'm displaying a call tree where this is the main program that calls Jacoby. I think that's an error. I don't think Jacoby uses over 100% of the time. Um, and then here's our looping structure, and it shows us the average uh, loop trip count. And then this is the initialization and the um, MPI down here. Okay, so now in the annotated listing, um, you also notice that it tells me that the compiler vectorized this loop and unrolled it by three. Uh, and the reason it unrolled it is because of all these um, I, I minus one and I plus one because you're really effectively utilizing cache uh, that way. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is just use reveal to generate an open MP uh, code. And so um, we bring up reveal, we select uh, that outer loop on iterations, which is, we don't wanna do that, that's not, parallelizable because it's iterating and it even calls a MPI routine here. So we kind of drop down and we choose K. And now we bring up another window comes up and it says, do you want to scope for a GPU or scope for a CPU? And so I do CPU initially. And then it comes up and it tells me all of the variables that are scope private and shared. This means that that's a reduction function, but there are no inhibitors to this loop. And so I just insert directives and, and I look at the, here are the directives. Uh, you notice it always uses default none. Um, so that it, this is a good way to do, um, uh, have it do self-checking. Okay, and now I run it on, um, on the AMD node, and it scales pr pretty good, um, up to 16 cores. Um, so that's OpenMP. But now I want to generate GPU code, all right? And so I go back and I choose GPU. And now there are several things going on here. Notice the G. The G is very important. Basically what that's saying is those arrays are in a module. And so we're going to have to do special extra care to make sure that arrays are updated prior to returning, because those arrays may be um, used in other places. And when you have a module or a common block, you're going to have problems like this with both OpenACC and OpenMP. Now, unified memory gets you away from this problem. So, that's one thing that we are making sure that we generate extremely good unified memory code so that 
um, we, you don't have to deal with this global variable issue. Okay, so basically these are the OpenMP offload um, directives that were base generated. Now, the problem is, is there are some map uh, always, and that is because of this global nature. In other words, it's always going to have to write um, some arrays back to the host and one array to and from the host. Okay, so um, now we're, we're going to use perf tools in order to profile the GPU. Okay, um, now perf tools is not as automatic as the light group. You have to first um, uh, do a pat build and then run the instrumented version and then do a pat report. But this gives you excellent information. So what you see here is that over 90% of the code is in data movement. Now, this is after the compiler has optimized out a lot of the data movement. But this is necessary because of the halo exchanges. And notice that there, there are two, this weight and this kernel. This is saying that 0.6% is spent by that kernel on the GPU. Okay. And um, so now let's kind of go back um, here. This also gives you, it shows you what the where the kernel is. And the G's are where the parallelism is happening. So this is spread across high level, and this is the low level SIMT um, uh, threading. And we do have the reduction function. Okay, but this is really the problem. This call to send P is a halo exchange, and it's passing in P which is calculated in that previous loop. Um, well, there's a loop in between. So uh, yeah, P is set equal WRK2. And then there's an all reduce. But we want to look at the halo exchange because we cannot afford the message passing around this halo exchange. Okay, and so what I'm going to move to, and Helen, I'm sorry, because I did, in I can't find the version of this code where I did the halo exchange in uh, a mantle. So I'm going to go to um, Leslie 3D. Oh, before I go there, uh, I want to kind of tell you the other thing I did was to put all the kernels that use the um, variables that are um, accessed in that loop. Um, I want everything to be on the accelerator. Okay, so um, this is the thing that really reduced uh, the data movement. Okay, so um, when when you are packing buffers on the accelerator, you typically have this. So you pass in an array, and then you pull off the uh, edges. So this is kind of the north um, pulling out the uh, part of the uh, 3D array, and then I'm sending the north. Um, to my neighbor. Okay, so to put that on the accelerator, it's very easy. Um, you just do a target um, and um, then um, I'm updating the host with 
um, the um, buffer. Now, there are corresponding receives. Um, and so on the receive, you basically are uh, setting into the variable. And so that way you have to do an update to the accelerator um, and, or excuse me, to the host, I'm sorry, and uh, then do this. I'm sorry, this is on the accelerator too. Well, anyways, you know what I mean. Okay, um, but there is something that's much, much nicer, and that is using device arrays or device pointers. So what I've done is I've uh, made all of the buffers device pointers. And now I do not have to do any updates. All I do is I use those um, pack and unpack uh, loops on the accelerator. And, um, and, and then I use this device pointer and it turns out that now this doesn't even go to the host. It goes directly from the accelerator to the NIC. And, and so this really improves your halo exchanges. And the same thing uh, with the receive buffers. Okay. Now, I, I ran this actually on PizDant in Lugano. Um, and this doesn't really help you that much on small numbers of nodes using device buffers. But when you get to large number of nodes, you really get a significant increase in speed because you're really cutting down all that overhead of transferring de data back and forth to the host. Okay. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you um, is we have this debug environment. One of the developers who is an awesome, awesome um, coder, um, he put in his own debug. And I was, uh, this was way back in the days of Titan. And I was porting S3D with OpenACC to Titan. And I needed something to help me debug the code. And he said, hey, I have this a Cray ACC debug. There are three levels, one, two, and three. One shows you all of the transfers and all of the kernel executions, where they come from, and what on the line number, so what routine, and what line number, and and then syncs. And so this is just, you know, it's transferring 29 items, uh, et cetera. It, now it, it says it transfers that, but then notice it says there's zero bytes transferred. And that is because, um, that's what the analysis said to do, but the compiler recognized that those arrays were already on the host or where they should be. Okay, this is two. And now this gives you the actual array name and the size of the array that's being transferred. Okay, in and, and this. So you have this and it's coming out on error out. And then if you hit a problem on the accelerator, you know exactly where it is uh, because this stops, the output stops. It tells you it probably came off in a kernel. Um, it shows you exactly where that is. Now, this is the kitchen sink which is extremely useful uh, because this really, it tells you everything. It tells you the size, 
It gives you the host and the accelerator pointer. It uh, gives you the striding. Um, and this is it. The compiler has this present table. And in the present table is a region of data that represents that data element. And this is why you can um, equivalence variables and still recognize that, in fact, it might still be on the, um, on the accelerator. And so this is just so valuable. It's an extremely useful. So what have we learned in this very short presentation? Um, PerfTools is excellent for identifying issues in existing applications for improving threading, vectorization, and scalar optimization. I, I've, I've been using this for 20 years. I am the biggest user. Um, if you ever have any problems with perf tools, ask me. Reveal can really help with scoping variables. Now, in Hamino, it didn't even need any help from the user. But in something more complicated, it's going to come back and it's going to tell you, you know, I don't know what to do with this variable. And then the user can say, ah, I want to make that private or it should be shared. Now, I don't recommend using Reveal on C++. It's just there are too many issues with C++. Now, moving to the GPU is difficult. However, you can do it in steps that are more manageable. And Perf Tools identifies the bottlenecks for you very quickly. Um, and finally, GPU Direct is the best way to do message passing. Um, and this is even getting better because on um, uh, Frontier, the MPI can actually run on the accelerator. And so you don't even have to have the host invoke the MPI call. There are three um, cases in, in that um, that I don't have time to go into because I'm out of time and that is my last slide.